This is another weird one. This is from 1986 called the Jade Hair. Um, this is the holy grail for a lot of people to find this one. Uh, this one's in shrink wrap. There are, I think, three or four known copies in shrink. Uh, Ten total copies or so, maybe 12, that have a cover. There are a bunch of copies out there, you know, a bunch being maybe a hundred, that don't have a cover. Uh, but this is, uh, you know, a real, a real find for, for folks. <laughs> How about the questions? You want to do some of the go over the arc? I was gonna say yeah. Um, just uh, like maybe your like the first module you played. Yeah, the first one was uh, uh, B two, um, uh, keep on the borderlands. Okay. Um, but the modules, so the modules are my, my favorite thing. My mod, the modules of first edition D and D are my favoriteest thing. Okay. And I think it's the combination of the evocative art on the covers. Right. As a kid going into a game store, I'm like, oh my god, look at that. Um, because the art fires the imagination. I mean, the, you, you can't, I think we all, everyone accepts this as, as gospel, that art and RPGs are, are you know, yeah, they're, they're intertwined to a degree. I mean, one can't, it, the RPGs would never be as successful as they are without the art. Right. So my favorite module of all time, and I have a few, I've got a big blow up one in the next room, is uh, where I have that. Oh, it's over here. Um, kind of obscure one, actually. Tomb of the Lizard King. That, if I had to identify what is my favorite module, I too, Mark Akers, not a really, you know, a lauded guy from mm -hmm. TSR. He was a freelancer. Um, I love this module. I probably have, I probably, I have a bunch of copies, more than I should. Uh, but this is the original shrink wrap copy, one of them. And uh, I love it. I think it's really, I think it's a great adventure. And I, because I remember walking into Pegasus Games, which at that point was on State Street, and seeing this on the shelf, on the, on the shelf and thinking, oh my god, look at that. That looks amazing. Um, and so it's always sort of stuck with me on um, that module. So that's my favorite. Okay. Yeah, but I love the sorry. modules. I'm, I'm always, I'm so, there are a lot of big collectors out there and I'm one of them, but I'm sort of known as the module guy. That's yeah. sort of my, my big, 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 my specialty. Yeah, I, I've actually just started kind of going through, because um, I've homebrewed a lot of stuff because uh, everything I have is built for 4th edition, mm -hmm. my, my world, and so I had to bring it over to 5th edition, and mm -hmm. I had to, you know, kind of mess stuff around or whatever, and so that brought me into um, these older modules, and I actually just ran the Sinister Secrets of Saltmarsh. Sure. And I had no idea the history behind it. You know, some of my players who've been playing for years, you know, like, oh my gosh, I know exactly what this is. I know what's going to happen, and I know, you know, and they got really excited. It was it was cool to see that, you know. Yeah. Well, I think you know, similar to my answer about um, DM versus playing, it's the same thing. But oh, I only homebrew. I only run my own stuff. Okay, that's great. Um, but it's worth picking up once in a while a product and just reading it for ideas for your homebrew. You right. know, uh, that's the thing. You know, you can think, well, that was really neat how they did that. Well, that was a really interesting way to get the players to you know go in that direction. I never would have thought to do that. Um, so uh, the if it's third party or uh, you know official wizard stuff, you know I think it's always good to you don't have to buy everything, but you know when you have when you have a chance, pick something up and take a look at it. For sure. Anything you would recommend for uh, either new DMs or anything that you would recommend to kind of tired DMs. I, I, I don't know if that's a good word. But. Okay, so if you're talking about someone who's just wants to run D&D &D and they haven't done it before what to do, uh, the, the two beginner boxes, the starter set and the uh, um, the essential set are amazing. Amazing. Found Over is, is a wonderful module. I mean, I, it's, I think as we go forward in time and we're going to look back on that and say that was a really high watermark in design was a really great module in the, in the starter set. And then in the Essentials set that just came out, I think it's still only at Target. I think it's still Target exclusive time. I think sometime, maybe it's in sub September, it goes to game stores. Um, again, I'm a name drop, but I was sitting in, at Wizards you know, in April, and Chris Perkins was sitting and showing it to me, and he had a prototype of the, of the rule book, and their adventures that are double truck, the whole thing, two pages. It's it's the seed and some some copy describing it and you could there are four four game sessions right there. It's, instead of making you know these massive products, um, 
you know, my daughter is 11 and she's going to run one of those adventures at GameWorldCon because it's just that, you know, she can do it. So those are, for the people who are out there who uh, have not played D&D and want to pick, those are two great products. Man, we've never had, I mean, compared to, you know, the player's handbook, what I bought when I was 12 and I'm flipping through this thing and like, what? You know, like, what I, I if I, an elf can only be at this level and what these percentile tables and it was almost inscrutable, you know, compared to how accessible the hobby is now. Um, so, and then, gosh, if you're a board DM, I don't know what to tell you, man. There's so much stuff out there right now. I just, God, you talk about the, all the, especially for 5e, when it comes to uh, great publishers, you know, Wizards is producing all kinds of great stuff, but Troll Lord Games and Frog God Games and Kobold Press and Green Ronin. I mean, there's so much great stuff and dozens of others I'm forgetting. Mm -hmm. So much stuff out there. I, uh, yeah, man, you just go into any, yeah. Of widen your scope essentially yeah, you yeah. Know, look at some like because you said earlier about you know playing with call of cthulhu yeah and uh that's one that i think i've had like maybe one friend mention to me and i i mean like i love that mythos i mm -hmm. read you know um and she wells and all that kind of stuff whatever but like for whatever reason i've just never i've seen the book even yeah just never picked it up but well you know this is this is how i think other game systems kind of influence D and D. I'm going. Um, I'm, just, I'm just going to assume that none of my players that are uh, <laughs> going to be in this event are going to watch this interview, but we'll see. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, now. exactly. If you're going to be in uh, Hell, Michigan, uh, in uh, because it's literally in Hell, Michigan, in uh, uh, in September, uh, they're doing a uh, adventure league uh, uh, event uh, with the uh, Descent, the Inverness book that's okay. coming out mm -hmm. and I'm going to be running so part of I'm going to be running a streaming piece for some players I am going to uh, work an insanity piece into it even though it's not going to be written and it's not going to be anything that's going to be you know you're going to go insane but it's going to add flavor I mean these are characters that are going to hell I just think there should be some consequences, mm -hmm. you know, and so that I, uh, and, and it's not going to be game breaking stuff like, oh, you, you find yourself on the ground holding your head screaming. It's not going to be quite, you know, but intrusive thoughts that you know are not from yourself. And I'm just going to describe this to each player and hopefully make it personal. And that's from the experience, you know, of playing Call of Cthulhu because it's pretty, you know, it's the, the insanity mechanic doesn't have to be, oh, like hit points. You lost five points of sanity. Oh, what does that mean? Well, it means that, um, you know, you're becoming, you were already insecure about your place in society, uh, but now you're really, you're becoming increasingly convinced that your, uh, your, your friends are false with you, that they don't, they're putting on a fa false airs with you, they're, they're, and this is really shaking the core of your being. Uh, and so that sort of peace, that kind of flavor, is not anywhere in D&D. But I think it's really neat in Call of Cthulhu, and I'm going to try to shoehorn it in there, see how it goes. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Yeah, so... Starting from... Right to left. From uh, here? This, oh, this, this, no, okay, yeah, my yeah. left. Okay, so um, over here and uh, on the far side, first of all, that's my miniatures cabinet. Uh, big minis are above, small ones are organized below by type and uh, tackle boxes. So if I need skeletons, I can go to the undead cabinet, bunk, and out they come. Otherwise, as you all know, Miniatures become just an, a hopeless mess, and I've <laughs> said I couldn't take it anymore, yes. so I've tried to organize. But anyway, so uh, below our, our box sets, this is first and second D editions D and D. Uh, all the things from you know uh, the World of Greyhawk box set, one of the first ones, uh, through all the you know Planescape battle system, um, Dark Sun, all those sorts of things. And you notice there are multiple copies of each. Uh, it's because there's at least one original shrink wrap set because that was my stupid windmill tilt that i set myself to was to try to assemble a complete set of everything tsr ever published in original shrink shrink wrap which was so dumb um, but i'm i'm literally one module away from doing so and I'm, i'll get it it's not a real rare one but uh it's crazy uh, so anyway that's what those are above second edition D D. so this is starting with the rule books um then the, the reprints in the late 90s and then all this mostly forgotten realms uh supplements Behind me, top shelf here, 5th edition D&D, below, more box sets, and then the bottom two shelves, behind me, and to my right and your left, are all the modules. I have some in the back rooms, too. My real prize in my possession, uh, my collection, I mean, uh, again, every module that's ever been produced, 
uh, almost every printing and almost every printing in original shrink wrap. So, you know, from soup to nuts. And so I pulled a few rare ones. Then I showed you my I2, that's not particularly rare, but you know, the orange B3 was a quite rare uh, module. This was, um, it lampooned several members of uh, the TSR staff, including Gary, so they ordered it thrown away. Um, and this is a copy and original shrink wrap. I've got one not in shrink as well. Then there's some weird things that TSR did, like this one, uh, ST1, this is a kind of inf infamous one, up the garden path. Scarcity makes rarity. And this is this one was uh, TSR UK produced this terrible module. It's not good. But they released it at the England Garden Show. And of course, none of it was sold. <laughs> very few sold. I mean, there's no, there weren't a lot of gamers that went to the Garden Show. Um, and so these are very rare. And I think I've got a, I've got another one of these. Uh, this is another weird one. This is from 1986 called the Jade Hair. Um, this is the holy grail for a lot of people to find this one. Uh, and this one's in shrink wrap. There are, I think, three or four known copies in shrink. Uh, Ten total copies or so, maybe 12, that have a cover. There are a bunch of copies out there, you know, a bunch being maybe a hundred, that don't have a cover. Uh, but this is, uh, you know, a real, a real find for, for folks. And then I just, you know, grabbed a couple other things like, um, I don't know, maybe you've never seen what the original character sheets look like. This is called the Character Archaic. TSR, when it first produced D&D, had no intention of doing stuff like this. They weren't going to make modules, they weren't going to make accessories, they were just going to produce the rule set and, and, the, and the famous words, they say, we're not going to tell you how to play this game, Here's, the, here's some basic foundation for it, you go have at it. Well, this was the first third-party publisher, they're called We Warriors, and they produced the character archaic, uh, which were pre-printed character sheets. This is the first set, uh, there are two printings, this is the first printing. They also produced the first two modules ever, Palace of the Vampire Queen and uh, Dwarven Glory. Uh, and that's when TSR started noticing, wait a minute, they're selling a lot of those. Maybe we should get in that business. <laughs> and this was the first TSR set of uh, character sheets. Um, it's, you'll know from the, uh, the uh, stock number on the bottom, F1009. And there are, I think, three known copies of this one. Um, this is one of them. So, you know, that's the... The, some of the rares I have, and that's what all this stuff is. And I've got, as you guys saw in the other rooms, I have Techumel, Traveler, I'm a big Traveler fan, um, Call of Cthulhu, Castles of Crusades, Pathfinder, Savage Worlds, and all that stuff back there. I've got, got a complete set of dragons, dragon magazines, um, all kinds of stuff. So that's, yeah, this is a, this is, weird. This is a, kind of a, a working, uh, uh, museum, but it's we you know we play here once a week. So. I was gonna say I, I kind of like the effect of having the multiple copies, both the the shrink and the non, so you can enjoy. Like, well, I mean, I get asked all the time, why do you have so many copies of the player's handbook? That's because we were playing it, and so we could everyone could have a copy, grab it. You know, right. we used to, we played first edition forever, uh, and I and now I've gotten rid of a bunch of sort of the kind of beaten up copies, and now there's some odd printings and collectibles in there. But the genesis of having seven or eight copies of each was because to have everyone to have a book if they wanted it. You know, I wasn't hoarding. I just was, we were using them. Uh, and so that's why, uh, that's why so many. That's why I continue to this day. But then, you know, it's being, it's been really fun sort of being in, in the industry now. I don't know. I find myself kind of in the industry, which is pretty neat. Um, like this thing, uh, this is just last year, Mike Merle's, uh, was up here and he's become a good bud and he uh, played a game here he ran it for charity in the game hole and he had his own custom dm screen that he built um it's got his own rules he has some stuff back here that is now becoming published uh but at the time it was prototype so he signed it to me and he dated it and gave it to me I'm like well how neat is that i mean i got stuff like that you know the people lay on me i'm uh, fortunate my friends to put it that way i guess so um so yeah, that's what all this stuff is. Very cool, very cool.